So, Cliff, what's your advice to young pianists? Keep away from these type of things. Not all together, not all together. Ain't got nothing in them to read. <laughs> this one's got a lot of stuff. Yeah. This one, yeah. For example, Harry Belafonte's Diet. Oh, that's yeah, that's right. That's interesting reading. No, I found some good stuff there. I don't know. You don't read about Cliff Jackson's Diet in there, though. All magazines. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut out my subscription to to American Science Scientists. That's nothing but advertising. Now, I'm not gonna argue with look. That. Time. Well, it's always time. Of course, time is the only thing that only magazine I think is worth reading. But they getting so now they getting full advertising. Well, I'd like to ask you some questions about these clubs in 1926. The Colored Performers Club. Was that the actual name of it, or was it the? Uh, was that the place where they had all the, uh, the cu cutting contests? Well, yeah. On 416 Lenox Avenue, a fellow who uh, was a manager, a fellow by the name of George Honan. Who? George Honan. H O N A N. Performers Club. The yeah, Colored Performers Club, 416 Lenox Avenue, January of 1926. The reason I got these things: lack of dance hall license. Uh, 14, 426. Yeah. Lennox Avenue. Yeah, 416 Lennox Avenue. 416 and the name was uh, 1926 that the clubs were in the here, Cotton Club, 644 Lennox Avenue, that, that we know about. The Capitol Palace Club at 575 Lennox Avenue, that's where you play. Connie's Inn, another club. The Nest Club, uh, that's where uh, Sam, well, Sam Woody used to play there, but then I guess we right. see. Barron's Exclusive Club, the Happy Roan Cabaret, Lions Club, and a Hole in the Cellar. <laughs> I mean, these hole in the wall. Well, they, had, they had a hole in the cellar. <laughs> hole in the wall. Go to all of them, most of them. And uh, I'm just wondering about these things here. They work on that. Let's see. Swanee Club. You Swanee got that Club. there? That was in the village, right? No. So it was up, up down there, up there. Twenty Fifth Street, right under the Palo Theater. This was the era of the when the Savoy. Ballroom. Uh, before the Savoy. Yeah, before, I mean, this is what I'm talking about, when the Savoy Ballroom was being erected, and they had advertisements on six pages out of nine pages of a magazine or a newspaper, or on the, uh, or on the Savoy. I got that in Quiet, please. I got two recordings on that, one on that 10 inch one on the other. I have that outfit, too. Come on, outfit. Yeah. Then there was the Rodeo Club. Rodeo Club. I have that outfit. I have that outfit. I like to run something very original on you that's never been done. That could not could never be done unless somebody really does newspaper research, which I've done. I can take all these advertisements out and make a panorama of Clinton Jackson from the Capitol Palace all the way up to as far as you want it to go up, you know? What do you think, Clinton?
how it's music related. What was the significance of that name? Was that You worked for somebody, didn't it? Uh, Lionel Howard was the leader of the group. Lionel Howard. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now the next next club here, the Capitol Palace. If you know of any uh, side jobs and so forth, I mean, was the Happy Rollins. Well, I went there with, later. Okay. I went to the Nest side. From, the Nest from the Capitol Palace to the Nest, right? You no, know, I uh, organized a group. I went in the Nest Club of my own. Oh, <laughs> and the Capitol Palace, you were still with Howard's music places all the way through. Just for six months. Well, did you know a girl performer in Holland? She's dead now. About 29, 30, named Nika Shaw. Where did she work? She worked in Connors Inn. No, no. But did she work in the joint? Because I got tight and made love to her. And I was with all my college friends. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Long, uh, right. And uh, <laughs> you know what happened? There were a couple of very big, big, uh, very dark characters who didn't like the spectacle. And they began to advance, and my boys just surrounded me. I was there. <laughs> and it was, I tell you, it was one of the joints. Well, it could have been. Uh, that you or the lion used to play in occasionally. It was a couple of steps down. Oh, Mexico, maybe. You think it might have been? Mexico, the Tillis. It was <laughs> Chicken Shack. <laughs> no, no, it was Mexico's. I Mexico, think it could have been. Yeah, okay. Mexico. Nothing was getting yeah. going where the, line, where the lion was playing. Okay, was was playing. The lion was playing. About 29. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good then. Yeah, about 29. Uh -huh. Uh, you know who recalled it? Did you make it? I'd like to have a rundown on a different place. It was a reunion. It's possible. I don't know. Uh, the boys Nest, and then uh, I took the group over back here. into the Capitol Palace and put the group in there on my own in the Capitol Palace. Yeah, first, I worked in the Capitol Palace twice. How was Musical Aces was the first group. That was the way you were sidemen. Mm -hmm. at, the Capitol, at the Capitol Palace. Next location was the Nest, Nest Club. The Nest Club. With my own group, Cliff Jackson and his Westerns. Cliff Jackson. And none of those guys have been farther west than Newark. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. Now the next, the next club after the next club, back to the uh, Capitol Palace. Capitol Palace. Still with the same with the Westerners? No, it was another group. Capitol Palace. Now after the Cap, can you give me an approximate? The, the next club, what day? What dates? You know, any idea yeah, what? Yeah. 25, 26, somewhere around there? Yeah. Okay. Now, Capitol Palace. Back to the Capitol Palace. I was at, yeah, after the Nest Club. Yes, now, after the Capitol Palace with your own group. I went over to Happy Room. Happy Room. Next. We went from there over to the uh, Rodeo Club. Rodeo Club, yeah. Now, after the Rodeo. Yeah, after the Rodeo and the Swanee Club. Swanee. You're a prominent clubman. Next, yeah. <coughs> After the Swanee Club, I think I went downtown to the. Uh, it's a very important oh, no. this, uh, presentation because I'm, I'll, I'll dig up little clippings on you all through this uh, period. Well, I, I just have to have the order so I can fund these things. Oh, you mean before I went in the Swanee Club or the Rodeo Club? I think I went downtown to the, uh, the ballroom there, <laughs> Balconies. Uh, Sixty-six, yeah, but I'm up at five. Columbus Avenue. That was right at the Happy Rooms Club, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Now this, every one of these That's clubs, you had your own man, right? Brad Gown. Oh, you met him down there, Brad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was playing with the New Orleans Five. New Orleans Jazz Band. Right. Holy cats! Let's see, Valentine. <laughs> I can date that. Who was the clarinet with the group? Uh, Brad was playing clarinet also. And the clarinet and cornet. And cornet. Uh, you remember any other member with the New Orleans Jazz Band? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Drummer, uh, drummer was a. The drummer was the oh, little short, lame guy. He was the leader of the band. Uh, I think he lived over in Brooklyn. I think he's still, he's still alive. Last time uh, I saw him, he's still, he's still living in Brooklyn. Tommy DeRose? I forget him. It sounds like it sounds yeah. like it. Uh, now, let's see. Howard Musical Aces Capitol Palace. And that's club. Uh, this is the beginning. Cliff Jackson as Westerners. That's the very first name of your own band that you've ever had, right? As Westerners? Uh, well, I had... I had the Crazy Cats in Washington, even before I came to New York. Oh, I had a group called the Crazy Cats in Washington. Capitol Palace, another group, Happy Room, another group, Balconies. Every one of these was under your own name already, if I don't Then the Rodeo Club, then the Swanee Club. Now, after the Swanee. After the Swanee Club. Oh, uh, I think I went up to the Lennox Club then. Right. 
That's when my friend ended up mm -hmm. having to come up and see him. Now, after lunch. After the lunch club, I went on the road to the show. What's the name of the show? Everything uh, is so significant because I got, I got reference to most everything here. But, uh, just talk about the name of the show. Sure. Who was in it? Ryan and Mae McKinney. Ryan and Mae McKinney. Give me a few more. You won't even have to knock, you, knock your, your brain out of this. I'll, I'll get the information for you. Uh, how about the male lead? Come yeah, Was yeah. it a, uh, a, 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 a comedy? Musical comedy or a... Oh, uh, it was a musical comedy. Ryan and Mae McKinney. Uh, who sang the uh, blues in the group? What circuit? Uh, do you remember the, uh, was it a, uh, a successful show? Well, they made money. Uh, the promoters made money. Was this before Nina May uh, became a, a part of the movie star? The movie actress? Yeah, that yeah, was before she went to California. That's before. That's before she, uh, she was in the Halloween. Oh, that's what it was before after. I forget. I think it was after. It was after that she was tremendously popular. It was a big drawing card then if she was uh, in, the, in it. Yeah, I forget. Alright, well, you don't have to worry. The key word, the key name is Nina Mae McKinney. Mm -hmm. And you're on the road with her. How long have you been on the road with her? You're on the road with her. Eight or nine months. Eight or nine months. Now, after this uh, uh, show, Remember what was next? This is about 1930 already, right? 31? 1932 or 33. I went in the Savoy. Savoy. And I broke up the group all together. You were in the Savoy club? I don't remember exactly. We went after. I had a group of my own, and I was in there with Chick Webb for, for a while. Yeah, well, I used to go in those days. I was in there with Fess Williams for a while. Fess Williams. Well, Fess Williams. Now, on the road, on this night of Mega Kinney band, getting back to it, but was the band under your ages on your uh, control name? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I was the musical director of the show. The musical director. Okay. Now, after the Savoy Ballroom, which is about 32, 33, what was the next? You broke up the band, you were telling me. Mm -hmm. Then I organized a small group and went into another joint called the Swanee Club, which was another Swanee Club. <laughs> was this in Newark? No, I was in, in New York. I took a group over in Newark too, at a place called the Cotton Club. Cotton Club in Newark. Mm -hmm. hey, was it this, at this time? It was around 1928, Before been, I went in the Lemmick Club. Before you went in the Lemmick Club, mm -hmm. the Cotton Club. Uh, Some ways around the Swanee Club era. Swanee and Lennox. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this is in Newark, New Jersey. All right, now, after the Swanee Club in New York, that's after, after you broke your brand up the Savoy Ballroom, 1932 33, you said you went to the Swanee Club in New York. Now, after that, you mm, recall? Then I was, must be 1930. That was 35, 36, I think, 37 or something like that. Then I didn't do nothing but relax, I think. I just relaxed yeah. and relax. played gigs and gigs. did a few recordings. When did you play next? Did a little when arranging and so forth. When did you play next? Well, I went to Nixon in 1940. Oh, that was later. Right. Okay, and the next? 1940. Oh, I see small Then Then you went down to Condon's later on? Mm -hmm. You played down to Condon's later yeah. on? Yeah. Then at the Cyrus Casino, a lot of gigs on there with Bob Moore. Now, another thing. Uh, did you go no, to the Did you work at I was small. down to Lou Richmond's Dizzy Club. Oh, I used to go. <laughs> when, when was this? That was just before the coronation, before King George's coronation. You know something, Cliff? The reason we never went was I must have been drunk all the time. I used to go to Dizzy Club. You remember that? I used to go with Haywood Broom. Yeah. Remember Haywood? He was Certainly. always there. Mm -hmm. Gordon Collin. Yeah. I, I saw Lou. Mark Allinger. I saw Lou the other night. No kidding. Mm -hmm. I know him a lot. Uh, Mark Allinger? Yeah. Remember those yeah. Yeah, well, I have, I'm not old if I know it. See, this is why I, uh, this is a good way, this is a scientific way to interview a person. I, see, I perfectly understand, like a lot of other people do not understand, it's impossible to recall. But I just hardly remember what you did yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, a person like yourself, who has been through so much, I and seen so many musicians, <laughs> seen so many, has played so many records, and so forth. Uh, if I can get these clubs, I, there's no reason why I can't help. Since I have spent like 10 years just accumulating all this data from the New York age, mm -hmm. Billboard, Clipper, 
uh, New York Star. I've gone through all these things. And it just takes me, sometimes it takes me three months to gather all the stuff together. But I can do it. Now, by giving me <coughs> an idea just when you were here, I can go to my sources and get out of there. And then once I get this thing all worked up, I can come back with further information, get mm -hmm. personnel and so forth. That's the way I do it. We just worked on Willie Gant. <laughs> Willie, who had a very short damn career sure. in comparison. He started 19, according to 1920, and he, 26, he was uh, he back to his uh, piano cocktail party guy playing again. Mm -hmm. And uh, believe it or not, I found two clippings on Willie Gant. I found him when he was with, uh, with Sonny Thompson's jazz band on the road, and also when he, the rarity, which really stunned me, that uh, he had the band before, or maybe when Charlie Johnson may have been on a furlough or something from the club, at the uh, small. Did you work at small? Though? You work at Edward No, I know it's worth the small. Well, the small and I never could agree with one another. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Willie had a very short career. As far as jazz. I've, I've always jazz been. Uh, Seems like I've always been too stubborn for those bosses or something. <laughs> they, said they, they said I was hard headed or something. Well, I just wouldn't be a yes man. So. Didn't, didn't really call it a I guess that's the reason I'm poor today because uh, I'm not a conformist. <laughs> Rudy took about I tell them all what I think of them and that's it. <laughs> Rudy took about so they don't have to tell me what I know what they think of me. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like what they hear. <laughs> that's right. Because I tell them the truth. Yeah. <laughs> they much prefer if you stuck to the piano. <laughs> now, uh, other things I like to ask, but uh, what, uh, under what circuit, uh, uh, circuits did you play? Do you have any of the types of booking agencies? Oh, That's money. another reason I'm poor. Because I wouldn't sign up with no agent. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that I have anything against agents. But you don't see that eye. I tell them, come on, play some piano. If they want to take get part of my salary. <laughs> so, uh, another question, Mr. Cash. When I was at Blue Richmond, I had an English booking agent. Wanted to book me over in England to play during the coronation. So I agreed to go over there. I asked them for a fabulous price. They agreed. And come time for me to go, they brought a contract down to the club there. So they had a 10% you know, his cut. And I had to pay King's tax 20%. I asked him if the king was going to play some piano. <laughs> he got insulted. He said, you can't talk about the king like that. So I told him, so I can't name the king. <laughs> <laughs> so then I didn't, I didn't get to the coronation. <laughs> uh, I'm sure the king didn't show any tears over it. I don't they think they like me in England. <laughs> well, they may have had a poster stamp made of you. Mm -hmm. They were making poster stamps of everybody back then. Right. <laughs> during the coronation. No. Uh, another question, Pat. Because I guess I missed a lot of fun. I should have gone over. Did you work exclusive with any blues singers? Nice. Hmm? Did you work exclusive with any blues singers? What do you mean? I mean, during the, any, well, any short Did I accompany you, any of them? Well, no, company we know about phonograph, but I mean, did you work on uh, with uh, in, a, in a short stint with blues singers? No. Just as a piano accompaniment? No, no, I played too bad. <laughs> I always played so bad, I almost always had to play by myself. <laughs> <laughs> a solo. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't nobody play with me. So, uh, do you remember any any piano piano pianist back in those days that really stood out as far as what you thought was great? I know sure. James P. How about Don Lambert? Don uh, Lambert. Willie Gant. George Rickson. George Rickson. Joe Steele. James P. Johnson. Mm -hmm. you remember when you met Don? Don. Oh, that boy. <laughs> <laughs> I really exasperated him. Oh, <laughs> no, no, Fats and I dog with me. He was going a good friend. And I'd never met the lion. So I I'd been in New York for two or three years, you know, playing around. So this particular night was at Small Paradise they were having a throwing a big party or something. Piano players and all and James and Johnson was there. And Line of Stroke in there, everything. Fletcher Henderson, George Rickson, a lot of piano players, Duffy Roberts, guys all there. So if that's come by where I was playing, say, 
I want you to come up to Small with me. You get a chance to meet the line. I said, yeah, I'd like to meet him. I said, I never did meet him. And I'd always heard, you know, people talk about how great he was. And I'd never heard him play. <laughs> so anyway, I just threw around working with Small. Pat Small and all that. And Willie was there playing the piano. And everybody standing around listening to me. <laughs> So the said, well, look at here, Cliff Jackson. Gee, wonderful. Come on up, Cliff, to meet the line. So well, everybody else who knew another other guy. He really looked at me. Ah, how are you? Oh, are you from Washington, huh? You're one of those little smart boys from Howard University. I said, no, I didn't go to college. What? You didn't go to Howard? I said, I went to college, all right. I didn't go to Howard. What college did you go to? I went to the college of hard knocks. <laughs> oh, you're smart, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, listen to this. <laughs> How you like that? How you like that? Now, that's pretty good. <laughs> what? Listen to this. <laughs> I tore the piano apart, man. How's that? I said, you did a little better that time. <laughs> And Pat's never there was dying, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but you play something. So I said, well, man, I don't want to stop it. James T. Johnson, yeah, I said, I, I wouldn't touch a piano near him. So I said, come on, play it. So Pat, go ahead and play something for Jimmy. Come on, Cliff, play the Harlem Strut or something. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so anyway, I started to get up on the piano. Lying, standing, chewing a cigar, looking at me. So I started playing some rag real fast, you know, and played about 12 bars, and I stopped. I said, oh, ain't even playing. I said, you wouldn't understand no way. Turn my back, you know, boy. <laughs> what a line Oh, if he, could, if he could have, he'd have torn all his hair out. <laughs> and everybody, you know, laughed because they knew I was bugging him, see, intentionally. <laughs> well, from then on, we've been pals, just like that. <laughs> he, he said, later on, you know, years later, he said, he said, you know, you really took advantage of me. <laughs> said, You're the first bum that ever got the best of me. Was the wine drinking in those days? Huh? Yeah, he used to drink. Yeah, he used to I drink. know he did, but no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he was a knockout. <laughs> what do you want, though? Hmm? Come here. You see these guys? Sit up and say hello to them. Sit up. Say good evening. Sit up. Say good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Say it. Say it. Good evening. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> My bodyguard. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I have a coach, too. He's not in the car. Yeah. I wish I could bring him in here. It'd be a bloody battle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he wouldn't fight. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Know. yeah. What would make it? He couldn't bring it He's a load of head. What is <laughs> Congress Congressman? What make it? What now, green? Somewhere's near a, a sheep, though. Oh, it's a sooner, huh? Sooner. Ah. He's, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Mike, like, what year? <laughs> well, he, was, uh, he was made 1950. That was 10. Mm, you better keep going on 10 years ago. You got a pedigree that long. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've never been able to trace his pedigree. He, always, he sheds a lot of pedigree. He registered as Little Red Duke. I just went to a birthday party. Oh, okay. A friend of mine, a guy used to play piano years ago, his daughter was having a birthday, so um, he asked me to come on down to the party. I went down, they live right around the corner from Condon, so after Part of it was over. I was stopped in time and run into a couple of drinking friends. And I think I came home this morning about one or two o'clock. The vodka running out of my ears and everything. I think now I was upstairs sleeping. Y'all came. I thought it was just about 9:30 when she came up there and called me.
and went up to a person, uh, one of the uh, fellows' pads. So over there was John Lee Hooker, Sonny Perry, and Brownie McGee. And were they hooting and I? Wow! <laughs> Terrific thing, I am. Mm. And uh, the beer flowed and the B.O. went. Mm. <laughs> I might go to work down at the, what do you call that, you know, at the round table, maybe later on, I don't know, for sure. Well, the three of us? Alone. Alone? They have to so bad I have to play by myself. <laughs> I don't know. What?